What is good? I am back with another reaction video. Ariel Hawani just went off on Brendan's job. Of course, I can't play the entire thing, but I can play you the best part. So I'm going to play this, react to it, then give you my thoughts. And uh, I must say, I think Ariel really <laughs> just did the finish, put the nail in the coffin on this one. I You might have ended Shab's career in the last one, but let's go ahead and check this out. See what Ariel had to say. Who starts their show with this? Who ends their show with this? You say that, hey, uh, I need 17 guests to come on my show. You guys could just sit in front of the camera and talk and people want to hear what you have to say. You need the big dogs to come on to get you over. And then you invite me to come on your show. Who needs who? I would never invite you bozos on my show. The only reason I had you guys on my show was because my good friend was doing PR for you guys way back in the day and asked me as a favor to have you guys on. I remember when I asked Brendan Chubb to come on my show many moons ago and he said he has his own podcast. He doesn't need to go on other people's podcasts. And I said, cool, best of luck, bro. And now you're inviting me, the guy who needs guests to get over, to come on the show that doesn't need guests? How does that all make sense? Can't say my name taking shots. And this is the big difference between you guys and myself and, and, and why it would be great if this ended. The big difference is you guys, and especially you, Brendan, uh, you will continue to lie. You will play by a different set of rules. I will never lie. There are no skeletons in this closet. I will never lie to you guys. I will never make stuff up. Yeah. I will never come out here and just pretend that I know things. I will never bend the truth. You will. So we're playing by a different set of rules. So you'll continue to come on there and say, I got fired by ESPN. Go for it. Like, that's such a funny joke. Again, I'll tell you, call them up right now. Do you want my boss's name? Call them up. I'll even freaking fax you, email you, scan, text you the offer that they sent me. No one got fired. By the way, didn't you have a cup of coffee doing Sports Center stuff with ESPN back in the day? I saw you in Bristol. I saw you with your little, your little suit. What happened to that? What happened to that cup of coffee? Who actually got let go from ESPN back in the day? If we want to go to, didn't you have a cup of coffee with UFC tonight and Fox back in the day? I, I think they thought that you were maybe one of the best brains for the arts. What happened to that? CTE brains. And so he'll continue to bend the truth. He'll continue to say that I was fired by ESPN, even though I wasn't even do I'm doing way better now, way happier, uh, financially with all these things continue to say that, will come up with the asinine, asinine excuse that, uh, or story, I don't even know what it was, that, that, that I'm banned from the city of Las Vegas? What the F does that mean? I mean, it's like at this point, what am I doing here? It, I almost feel bad. It feels so one-sided at this point. I legit feel bad for you guys. This is the best you got? This is your best shot? Coming up that I'm banned from the city of Las Vegas, that I can't go to your rinky-dink comedy show with the other 25 people in attendance that you claim was sold out, yet on every website, 50% off, 50% off, group on this, discount code that? What are you talking about, banned from Las Vegas? Were you trying to say banned from the UFC, even though that's not true either? Or did you actually really believe that I was banned from Las Vegas? Because if you did... I was there in August for SummerSlam. I just did a deal with another sports book. I don't know what the F you are talking about. You think these guys want to be in business with me? If I'm, like, why am I even paying attention to this? Why am I even answering this? I don't know. And people now keep saying, have mercy, have mercy. Don't punch down. Don't do this. Listen, punch again, down. I will repeat, this all could have ended if you just would have apologized like you said you were going to on your show because you didn't talk about me being a bad journalist or a bad host or a bad interviewer. You were talking about my character. And that means a lot. You were talking about my integrity. And that means a lot. My jobs, my well-being, my livelihood. You were talking about my family. And that's where things get a little dicey, dicey for me. And so I would say as far as a response is concerned, I was thinking, I was like trying to rate it. I was trying to rate the response. Best I could come up with, 1.7 out of 10. That was the best I could come up with.
1.7 at best, maybe 1.6, 1.7. You know that number, right? You've heard of that number, the 1.7 lowest rated comedy show in the history of IMDb. At least that's what I'm told. At least that's what the people are saying. Weak, phony. And then you got Brian sitting there like, hey, you know, I, 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 you know, you're, 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 you're causing trouble. You don't want this. I don't want that. Brian Callen is, is so afraid of me at this point. He doesn't want me to open up that closet and release everything that's in there. Well, call me up, beg me to stop this, do all this nonsense, text me, call me two minutes later, and then go on the show and not deliver what he said he was going to deliver, which was to clear the air and to end this once and for all. You're not fooling anyone. And the amazing thing about all of this, the amazing thing about all of this is the amount of people that have reached out to me to talk about you guys. Holy shit. I could not believe the amount of people on a daily basis to talk to me about you guys. Man, you guys have pissed off a lot of people over the last five years. People that you wouldn't even believe that are coming out of the woodwork to reach out to me. People I've never met, people I haven't talked to, to tell me, let me tell you about the time this happened and that happened and this time. Now, I have a line. I don't think you guys have a line, but I have a line, all right? I'm not gonna make this personal, but rest assured, there are people begging me to make this personal. End this now. End this now. There are people begging me to make this personal. You're gonna go back on your show and drink like a bunch of drunken slobs and talk shit about me, it's not happening anymore. You're going to go out there and say that I don't have the balls to say this to your face? Did you forget at my puniest that I stood in front of some of the scariest mofos on this planet? Rampage Jackson? Did you forget that I stood in front of Nick Diaz when he wanted to kill me? Rampage when he wanted to smack my head off? Did you forget Mayhem Miller face to face? And I didn't like, I'm not a fighter. I'm not here to fight. I quoted Hit Him Up, which is one of the greatest songs of all time by t -Pop. I'm not trying to fight you guys. That's probably the only thing you can do better than me is fight. And you didn't do a great job of that as well. But hey, respect. You stepped in there. I never did. But the lowest common denominator is always, oh, yeah. You can't, you know, you, you're you not man enough to fight. Oh, you want to go toe-to-toe? -to -toe? You won't say this to my face. I bet, I bet, I, d I, d I, d I, d I, d I, d I double dare you to today, Junior. Speak. Today, Junior. I never asked to fight you guys. I just said, make it right. I said, stop talking shit about me. And you won't. And you keep it up. And now you have nothing else to say. And so now you're going to challenge me to a fight. And so you're going to say, hey, you won't have the balls to say this to our face. You don't have the balls to say. And then you got the other dudes coming out like Josh Thompson and John, all these dudes, John McCarthy, all these guys. Look at the difference between those guys and the guys like Dom Cruz, like Michael Bisping, like DC, like Chael. The guys who are confident and comfortable in their skin and in their place in the sport and in their place in the history of the sport. They don't have to go out there and talk shit about journalists, talk shit about media, putting them down, making them feel like they're less adequate. The people who have put in the time as well, they don't have to do that. These guys try to come out of the woodwork to defend their Lord and saviors, whether it's Rogan or Shab, and then they come out and make it all about themselves. When did my credentials have anything to do with any of this? When did my, you know, my, me be, have I ever called myself an analyst? Have you ever seen me standing in front of this screen with a little pen and a little screen breaking down fights? No, I've never done it. I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. But if you want to know what my credentials are, and if you want to know if I'm allowed or worthy enough to sit here and talk about this and interview the baddest men and women on the planet. I have a piece of paper at my home in Montreal from one of the greatest broadcasting schools in the world, Syracuse University, the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications that allows me to do this for a living, to talk into this. And so if we want to talk about credentials, we want to talk about who should be there and who shouldn't, what are your credentials? What allows you to talk in front of this microphone? By the way, John McCarthy, when you left the sport, and all due respect to you, you send me nice text messages all the time, but then you go on and talk shit about me on your show. Who called you out when you left the sport to, you know, to do broadcasting for the Fight Network, to be the John Madden of MMA? Who said that you didn't deserve to speak in front of a microphone, to speak on camera? Where were your credentials? You're not a broadcaster. You've never done this. No one did because they respected you because you put in the work and you're a legend and an OG of the game. 
Same with Josh Thompson. What are your credentials to speak in? Because you walk the walk? No, no, no. We're talking about credentials here. I have a degree in journalism. I have a degree in broadcasting. What do you guys have? I'm not trying to fight. I'm not trying to go. You're coming into my world. I'm allowed to talk into this because I have a degree that says I'm allowed. So stop trying to question me. Stop trying to take shots at my credibility. I've been doing this for 15 years. I was going to your fights when a lot of other people weren't. Stop trying to make this about yourself. This isn't about you guys. This was about one hater, one jealous, insecure, fake phony who kept coming out and talking about me time and again for the past five years, talking about my career, my livelihood, who spread lies about 199, who spread lies about me being a good teammate, a bad teammate, when we all know it came from one source and I cleared it up with him. It would be nice if he came out and rectified that, but that's on him who came out and said that the only reason I did the Jake Paul stuff was because he turned down, who came out and said that I was fired from ESPN. Do you understand why this pisses me off? Do you understand why the sight of you two bozos pisses me off? Because you keep coming out there and you think that you're getting over on me. You think you're more successful than me. You say that I'm back at square one working for an incredible company. Trust me, I have been around the blog. I have worked for a bunch of people. Do we want to go through the list now of how many people I'm working with? Partners, people who are supporting me. Who's partnering with you guys? Who are you working with? I remember you on Fox. Not anymore. How's that going? How's the ESPN stuff going? How's the Showtime stuff going? How's all that going? If I'm so bad to work with, why did Vox want me back? Why did they want me back if I was so bad to work with? And all these other people. You sound like clowns. You sound like bozos. This can all end very quickly. And so let's go back to the thing because you got a bunch of people, again, people trying to make it about themselves. You got all the hanger honors. You got this washed up, old Mufasa looking like character in my comments all day, all night, trying to get a piece of the pie, trying to get the rub, trying to get put over by Hiwani. And so let me answer you guys very clearly because I've been waiting to, you know, give you the response that you oh so desire, that you oh so crave from me because you're looking for little old me, little skinny ass, soft, soy boy me to come on your show and to put you over. And so my answer is yes, I'd be happy to come on your show. Pick the time, pick the place, bring all your friends, bring all your joke writers, because I know you don't come up with your own crappy material yourself, bring all those guys <laughs> and I'll come by myself. I'd be happy to come on. You know what? I want the show to sound as good as possible, and I want the show to look as good as possible. I want the lighting to be just right. I want to be comfortable. So I'll tell you what. You want me to come on your show? I'll come on. Pick the day. Pick the time. No problem, Chico. Anytime. But I'm going to do it from this seat right here where I'm comfortable in front of this beautiful microphone that I've been given by the great people at Vox Media. And you'll come on here. And I think you guys could do live, even though you don't for whatever reason. We're live, baby. This is a shoot. All right? And we'll talk. And you can simulcast it. You could do whatever you want with it. But I'll talk here, too. And I'll have people who can watch it live on our channel, or they can watch it live on your channel that you guys own, that you're so proud of. Go ahead. You can do that. So tell me, anytime you want. Do you want to do that? I'll happily do that. I'll say everything that I've said to your face and then some via screen. Oh, wait, screen not enough? You said you'd come to New York, right? Anytime, let me know. Again, it'll be the guys in the back over here, but you both can come anytime. Again, I think you have me confused with a coward, with a phony. I have stood in front of some of the baddest guys on the planet and some of them have made me nervous. But I never back down. I never flinch. If that's not good enough for you, how about this? Why don't I just call you right now? I'm sure you're watching. You don't think I have the balls to say any of this to your face? You think I'm actually afraid of you guys? What are you going to do? Beat me up? What are you going to do? Slap me? That's what you're going to resort to? Fathers? Professionals? Broadcasters? What are you going to do? What you, you don't think I have the balls? Here we go. When they Here's balls. Money runs all over you. He's actually calling. <laughs> Who's going to pick up now? It's from my phone. Didn't tell the guys in the back about this. 
You don't think I have the balls to say any of this to you? Your call has you don't think I have the balls to say this to you guys? Let's try Callan. He wants to make peace. Let's call him right now. How about that? He texted me. Here we go. Let's see if he picks up. Callan's busy forcing someone to be his girlfriend. Nothing? What happened, guys? Oh, am I catching you off guard? The same way you talk shit about me over and over and over and over and over again? Is that catching you off guard? What is that? Come on, dog. You think I'm afraid of you guys? Call me back. I'll be here all day. We'll hash it out. Because you want to make things public, right? You want to make things public. You want to talk about my livelihood publicly. You want to talk about my situation, about the people that I work with. Look at all the people standing up for me now. Looking all, look at all the fighters who have my back. Look at all the people liking those posts. Who has your back? Who's looking out for you? Who's defending you guys? Let me know. And so fine, you don't want to talk? Fine. We'll do it on the show here. We'll do it in person. Or we could just drop all of this once and for all. And you give me what I want. I want you to go out there on your show and said that you lied about me constantly over and over again for whatever stupid reason because you're jealous i don't know what it is never had an issue and i always kept my mouth shut high road helwani high road helwani no more say that i'm a soy boy that i'm a this that i'm a that i remember you crying on air that's why i'm a soy boy because I cried once, because someone said that they were going to end my career, put a bullet in my head. Why were you crying on air again? I think it was about your friend, right? What happened then? I forgot about that story. What happened then? Someone can remind me what happened then. I can't remember. An amazing ability to fail up. From Rogan to everyone in between. That's what you should be proud of, that you've worked for all these people and none of them are beside you now again i'll tag you i'll come and say right to your face i'll talk about you i am not afraid in fact i was able to uh, unearth a uh, a clip from back in the day of uh, you actually for some bizarre reason saying that i make you nervous who would have thought damn obviously it goes on from there and there was a lot before that too but helwani has had it at the beginning of that rant that i didn't play uh he first started off by saying you know it's very weird that these guys had to start drinking just to muster up the courage to try and trash me on their podcast and still not even mention me by name will there be a response to this from them i highly doubt it will hawani continue to go forward with this I don't know. I hopefully he does. Because it's too much fun just to trash them, too. They're stupid. And they're telling the I like him, though. I like Brendan Schaub and Brian Callum. But, I mean, you keep lying about that guy. Then you keep texting him, apologizing behind the scenes. Then go on your show and continue to lie about the guy. It's very odd. But, you know, Brendan Schaub, he, that dude lies about everything every single thing every single thing about brendan job is fake even his wife with her she what is she like 33 she's getting liposuction and injections in her face that video is up on my second channel uniqueness fake butt shallow 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 wait, wait, wait. mark Marin now <laughs> and he's going off on Rogan. But he'll, I like the heel Wani. Uh, and by the way, th this is the difference in viewership. He does like a four-hour show. And he time stamps them out, even though it's going to be live. So he's like, all right, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Nganu at one. And so at four, he puts, I'll be answering your questions. 
There was about 2,000 people in his live chat for all the other segments, and then about 9,000 people in for the last segment. <laughs> Which is not how this sh his show is supposed to work. But it does work in that way, especially when he's trashing Brendan Schaub. Schaub, honestly, his response wasn't that good. The whole soy boy stuff. And, like, he even brought up, and that's the greatest thing ever, he knows how to really diss Shab. Shab, all he has is you've been fired, and, and which, who cares, even if he has, man. But he's like, dude, you're talking about sold-out shows. You had to cancel shows because you can't sell them out. By the way, Brendan Shab has canceled an upcoming show because he can't sell the tickets. Not that much of a draw, Bapa. And Brian Callen's getting hit on this. I think Brian Callen can probably patch it up with Hawani, but Brendan Job, nah. I, I see this war of attrition is probably going to continue. And they don't really have any more allies. I mean, even right there, he's kind of giving Chris D'Elia. He's bringing up that situation. Remember when Brendan Job cried on the Putter and the Kid podcast right after the allegations against Chris D'Elia came out. And I love how Hawani was like, you cried once on air. I, wonder what, I like how you played it off. I wonder what that was about. Oh yeah, it was D'Elia! And all the evilness he was up to. <laughs> Great guy, never met him. But Ariel Hawani, check out his pot. Like I said, that went a lot longer. I might play the rest during a live stream tonight, but... That went on for like 40 minutes. And then he took other questions and some more were about Shab. Hell, he's probably live right now, still trashing him, to be completely honest with you. But check out uh, his podcast, The MMA Hour. Great podcast. Never seen it, though. Uh, <laughs> and uh, check out his sub stack. That's where you he answer If you pay to join his sub stack, you get to ask him questions and he'll answer them directly. I think that's where he gets the questions to read on his um, podcast. So if you want to ask him a question about Brendan Job, uh, you got to do it through his sub stack, I believe. But uh, go ahead and sign up for that. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. 